Over the next couple of Saturdays, I'm going to do something that I'm really going to enjoy. I'm going to share with you some thoughts and the idea of miracles. And I'm going to begin the next few weeks by talking about some miracle stories that I believe are very credible. The first one comes from this book. It's Out of the Black Shadows by Stephen Lungu. Stephen Lungu is a Zimbabwean Bible teacher who tells the story of how he came from a background in gangs to become a follower of Jesus. And in the book, he gives the account of how he met his wife. He was praying one day and he had what he calls a waking vision. In that vision was a girl in a loose blue outfit who was holding a Bible. But the unusual thing was that the Bible was upside down and it was at Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26 happened to be a passage that God had used in Stephen's life. He had this vision two more times over the next two years. A couple of years later, after those visions, someone suggested to him that he might like to meet a girl called Rachel. I think that the person thought that they might make a nice couple. Anyway, he was in another part of Zimbabwe speaking at a youth meeting. When he was finished his talk, he was talking to a young man and he saw a girl in a loose blue outfit that was like the girl in the vision and she was holding a Bible and you guessed it, it was open upside down at Acts chapter 26. He couldn't believe his eyes. Anyway, a day or two later, he decided to follow up that conversation he had with the man who he had been speaking to, who had been inquiring of him. He called to the man's address and he knocked on the door. It was opened by a houseboy who saw that he was disappointed when the houseboy said, he's not here. The houseboy said, come in and wait for a while. He couldn't believe it because as he was waiting, the girl in the blue dress, who happened to be the man's sister, turned up. She came into the room. He got to know her and it turned out her name was Rachel. She was the very person that he had been recommended to meet and she was the sister of the person that he had gone to visit. She lived in that house. That's not a coincidence. There's just too many things there that seem God put together. He ended up marrying Rachel. And I don't think that he would look back and say, that just happened. That was God. Let's think of another miracle. The second miracle I want to talk to you about comes from this man here. This is Charles Spurgeon. He was a great Baptist preacher in London in the late 1800s. And Charles Spurgeon had maybe what we might call a gift of knowledge. Sometimes God would give him insights into situations. And I'll give you an example of one of them. On one occasion, Spurgeon was preaching to a number of thousand of people in the Exeter Hall in London. During his talk, his sermon, he broke off and he pointed down at a young man. He said, young man, the gloves you're wearing are not your own. You stole them from your employer. After the service, a clearly agitated young man, the man that he had pointed to, asked to speak to him privately. He said this, it's the first time I've robbed my master and I won't do it again. You won't expose me, sir, will you? It would kill my mother if she thought that I'd become a thief. I read another occasion uh, of him doing something very similar where he pointed at someone and pointed out that they had opened their shop the Sunday before when they had told everybody that they had closed it. He even mentioned what amount of shillings, how much money they had taken and how much was profit. This sort of thing happened a number of times in Spurgeon's life. He seemed to have this gift of knowledge. The last miracle that I want to talk to you about this morning, and we'll pick up more next week, comes from this book, Power uh, Evangelism, by a man called John Wimber. John ministered in the 70s and 80s um, before dying of cancer. Um, he was uh, a man used by God in many prophetic ways.
And one of the most remarkable encounters he ever had was on a plane going from Chicago to New York. While he was sitting there on the plane, his mind was drawn or his eyes were drawn to a man sitting across the aisle in front of him. And when he looked at that man, he saw across the man's face the word adultery. He rubbed his eyes and looked again and there was adultery written across the man's face. The man became aware that John was staring at him and said to him, what do you want? As he spoke, the name Jane, which wasn't the woman's real name, but the name Jane came into his mind. He said, does the name Jane mean anything to you? The man looked horrified and said, we've got to talk. Now, in those days, in the jumbo jets, there was a cocktail bar upstairs in what the hub of the plane looks like. And they went up there to chat. He felt God was speaking to him. First of all, the man said to him, he said, how do you know about Jane? Who told you her name? God, John Wimber said. God? God told you her name? Yes. And God had said something else to him. He said, God has told me that if you don't end this relationship, if you don't turn from your adultery, he's going to take your life. The man was shocked and said, what must I do? So John started to lead him in a prayer of repentance. But immediately as John spoke, the man started to weep and confessed his sin to God and had a very sincere asking God to change his life and come into his life. Then the man said to him, what do I do now? Well, he said, you're going to have to tell your wife. The man said, that's why we came up here. I was sitting next door to my wife or beside my wife in the plane. I didn't want to, her to hear about Jane. Well, you're going to have to tell her. When should I tell her? No better time than now. So they went downstairs and the man started to tell his wife what he had done. John couldn't hear the words, but he could see the shock and the pain, but also the confession. And it turned out that the man was leading his wife to Jesus for her saviour himself. After they arrived in New York, they talked and he found out that this man and his wife didn't own a Bible. So John gave them his Bible and they went their separate ways because John had to go on to a meeting. Anyway, next week we're going to look at some more examples of the miraculous. I hope you've been encouraged by these. God bless you. Have a good week.